It's a TV term and acronym I flippantly toss around as if everyone knows what it is, but in reality, most folks haven't heard of it before. You may have recently seen this though. In fact, I'm willing to bet that if you recently purchased a TV and it doesn't look quite right, your TV might be suffering from this dirty little secret. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I'm talking about Dirty Screen Effect, a phenomenon that's earned its own acronym among TV enthusiasts, DSE. In some ways, Dirty Screen Effect is an appropriate term. I think once you've identified it, you'll get it, but it doesn't exactly look the way it sounds like it should look. So in this video, I'll show you what Dirty Screen Effect looks like, explain what's happening on a technical level, help you test your own TV for DSE, and then talk about what, if anything, you can do to get rid of it. Before we dive into it, did you recently purchase a TV that had dirty screen effect? And if so, what did you do? Are you living with it or did you keep playing the panel lottery? Drop me a comment down below so we can talk about it. And while you're down there, please consider liking and subscribing if you found this video helpful because it gets it in front of more people who might also find it helpful. Thanks a million. Subs? Okay, let's get into it. So what is dirty screen effect? Dirty screen effect, I'm just gonna say DSE from now on, describes an issue where an LCD panel has inconsistent luminance performance across its surface area. It can appear as random splotches, uniform lines, wide bars, and in some cases, vignetting or slight darkening around the corners. DSE actually plagued plasma TVs as well, though to a lesser degree. Anyway, for most of this video, I'll be focused on LCD-based TVs. Now, as a reminder, or for anyone who may not have known, any TV that uses an LED backlight also uses an LCD panel. So TVs marketed as LED, QLED, QNED, and mini LED, they all have LCD panels and are all susceptible to DSE. Now, while the reasons you get DSC on an LCD are different, we do sometimes see similar effects on OLED-based displays as well. But like I said, that's a little different, so I'll address them separately. So DSC can be seen in all kinds of scenarios, but it's most likely to make itself known when there are big swatches of the same color on the screen. Take an ice hockey game, for example. Some areas of the ice will appear to be dingier or darker than other areas of the ice. You might also see DSE more easily when watching golf, when there are vast sections of grass on the screen. Some parts of the grass may appear to be darker or more muted in color than other parts. And the trick with DSE is that the issue is fixed to the screen. So as the picture moves, you'll notice that any part of the picture moving through these dirty areas gets a little dimmer or dingier. Hence, it seems as if the screen is dirty. Some DSC is severe and impossible to miss no matter what you're watching, but sometimes it's so minimal, you may not notice it unless you look hard for it. So to give you a clear example, this is what DSC looks like when exposed by test slides. You can see in this example, there's a sort of splotch here and here. In this example, you can see it manifest as vertical bands. And while I'm reluctant to call this DSE since it's hard to say if it's the screen itself or really just a backlight issue, and also because it's so prevalent no matter how clean a screen is otherwise, this is what vignetting looks like where the corners of the screen are just a bit darker. Now, stay tuned if you wanna test your own display as we'll be putting up some full screen slides for you soon so you can actually use that portion of this video to see if your screen has DSC. First though, let's talk a little bit about what causes DSC. Honestly, there are so many factors that can cause DSC. It's not really worth trying to go into all of them, but just stemming from the manufacturing of an LCD panel, you might get variants in backlight distribution or variants in TFT switching for subpixels or variants in conductivity and or capacitance of transparent electrodes. Man, that's hard to say. Anyway, the thing is the actual cause is less important than the common theme here, which is inconsistency. In panel manufacturing, there are numerous variables that can be introduced that would cause an LCD panel to have groups of pixels that shine less bright than others. And this variance is unfortunately part of the tech that makes our TVs. And the manner in which different manufacturers handle that variance is also, you guessed it, varied. Different levels of quality control by different manufacturers allow for imperfect panels to pass through and they later get used as consumer products. That's why the so-called panel lottery is a thing and I'll get into that in a moment. Outside of a TV simply being made this way, 
Dirty screen effect also can be caused by damage to the panel in shipping or maybe mishandling of the TV during setup or installation process. Generally speaking, it's recommended one avoids pinching or otherwise exerting pressure on the front of the TV screen. That's why we sometimes see these warning signs stuck to TVs when we unbox them. Okay, so how common is dirty screen effect? Honestly, this is a difficult question to answer because I don't have data that supports objective analysis on the prevalence of DSE in newly manufactured televisions. However, I can offer some anecdotal perspective based on my experience as a TV reviewer and the feedback I get from readers and viewers, as well as reports I see in AV forums. And from what I've seen, DSE ranging from insignificant to severe seems fairly common among newly manufactured LCD-based televisions due primarily to the nature of LCD panel manufacturing. Very broadly speaking, the less expensive a TV is, the more likely it is to exhibit some level of DSE. More expensive TVs are not immune to the issue, but some manufacturers have tighter quality assurance tolerances for their high-end products. So again, very broadly speaking, DSE tends to be less prevalent among those high-end models. Now, DSE as a symptom of age, well, that's virtually impossible to track. However, again, totally anecdotally speaking, I have witnessed DSE creep into a TV panel slowly over time and worsen with age. I've seen it happen in TVs I own, TV friends and family have owned, and TVs installed in commercial environments like hotels and bars. I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, the Eufy Security Video Smart Lock by Anchor. The Eufy Security Video Smart Lock combines the security of a video doorbell and a smart lock into one device that's packed with a boatload of features. It's got a 2K camera with an ultra wide 160 degree field of view, smart video detection tech, night vision, two way audio, remote locking and unlocking, auto locking, and perhaps its most James Bond like feature ultra fast fingerprint detection. Plus the video smart lock is super easy to install and there's no subscription fee whatsoever for video storage. Once installed, we tested the video detection technology, which is great at recognizing people, but also great at knowing that trees, cars, and shadows are not people, which means 95% fewer false alerts than other systems. By the way, all video is stored locally, never in the cloud, so it can only be accessed by you or someone you choose to share it with. The fingerprint tech though, it uses AI to learn fingerprints and gets faster at detection with each use. So eventually, it only takes 0.3 seconds from the moment you press your finger on the door to it being unlocked. Of course, you can also set up numeric codes as well. All told, the Eufy Security Video Smart Lock by Anchor is one of the smartest buys in DIY home security. Security. You'll find a link to the Kickstarter below along with a special discount. Thanks again to our sponsor. Okay, so now we're about to help you test if your display has dirty screen effect. But first, a warning. Once you see DSE on your display, it's really tough to unsee it. So if you're happy with your TV or monitor's performance and you want to stay that way, then you might wanna just skip to the next part. So what you're gonna see next is a series of full screen slides. We've got some gray ones in there and some color ones as well. And we've added some music just for your entertainment. As you go through watching these slides, keep an eye out for anywhere on your screen that isn't perfectly uniform. Again, you should see it as sort of dark splotches or bands or maybe some vignetting in the corners. All right, let's have at it.
Okay, so if you've seen dirty screen effect on your TV, then you might be wondering, how can I get rid of it? Well, I don't know that you're gonna like what I have to say here. Unfortunately, there's no way to eliminate DSE. Now, some websites suggest loosening the screws on the back of a TV to lessen the strain on the TV's panel. I do not recommend this tactic as it, A, could void your warranty, and also it's probably not gonna work. Frankly, and I realize this may not be the answer you were hoping for, but it is the truth. The best way to get rid of DSC on a newly purchased TV is to catch it early and return or exchange the TV within the typical 30-day customer satisfaction period. This is not something you can hope for a warranty to cover, since manufacturers aren't likely to want to repair or replace your TV when your complaint is over a flaw that that manufacturer already deemed to be within an acceptable margin of error. Their response is probably gonna be something like, that's within acceptable tolerances. Sorry, pal, thanks for your business. Outside of that, is there anything else you can do? Well, sort of. I mean, these are really just Band-Aid measures, but most TVs offer a game mode, which due to its tendency to brighten everything on screen, can help to obscure DSC. But again, this is just kind of a Band-Aid measure. The DSC is still there, but it may not be as obvious. Another somewhat helpful tip is to view the TV from as direct an angle as possible. As you move off axis, DSC tends to be a little bit more obvious. So sometimes it helps if you've got a very direct line of sight for viewing. Now, in very limited instances, some cases of DSC on OLED TVs can be remedied by manually triggering the TV's built-in pixel refresh system. And that's usually located somewhere in the TV system menu. Now, earlier in the video, you heard me talk about the panel lottery. What is this so-called panel lottery? Well, really, it refers to this kind of game that TV buyers unwittingly play when purchasing a TV. Sometimes you win the panel lottery, which is a way of saying that the TV you got was in especially pristine shape and shows no signs of DSC. It's also a term used to easily express that there's such a variance in panel quality that it's virtually impossible that you'll win a perfect panel. In other words, it's just all up to chance. So as frustrating as it may be that you really don't have any control over this situation, at least now you know what DSC is and what it looks like, and you've got a shot at returning your TV and getting another one if you spot it when you make a new TV purchase. Thanks as always for watching everyone. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and here's two other videos I think you'll like.